Welcome to the workbench and welcome to another episode of Wheels and Wings TV. Today we are going to be doing an inbox review. Inbox reviews are not something I've always found super useful because you never really get a feeling for a kit until you actually have it right in front of you. However, with Zvezda's new M4A2 Sherman, um, I haven't found any reviews yet in the English language. Now, the videography of the Russian, what I assume are Russian reviews, been pretty good, but who doesn't like some comical commentary to go along with their inbox review? They could have been saying all kinds of funny things. I don't speak Russian, therefore I don't know. So. We are going to be having a look at the brand new Zvezda M4A2 Sherman, the ubiquitous, iconic, allied tank of the Second World War, and argued by me to be the best tank of the Second World War. But we will leave that argument for the comments. So, comes in Zvezda's nice boxer here with the sleeve and a nice sturdy box inside little blurb about the Sherman and some pictures of their built-up example. Inside the typical opening box and big bag of parts, some instructions, a small bag of parts, and what we got? As you can see, this plastic bag, which is very noisy, hasn't even been opened yet. Literally just got these in today, so we are getting an inbox view and my initial impressions of this thing. So let's look at this here. So first of all, here are our color slash decal guide. We've got two Lend-Lease Soviet tanks one from Belarus in 1944, and one at Yalta in April of 1944. As well, if I throw it around, we've got two American ones, two US, well, sorry, one U.S. Marine Corps on Tinian in the Marianas in July of 44, and one at the Aberdeen Proving Grounds in Maryland, USA in December of 43. So probably some sort of trials vehicle, I would assume. So all of course in your standard exciting american overall olive drab whatever flavor of olive drab you prefer decals come in their own little bag with the clear parts and these look initially quite good it's going to be hard to tell until we actually put them on the model how translucent the white is going to be but looks pretty solid. Decals seem don't seem don't seem too thick. Don't don't seem overly thick or overly thin. Kind of in the middle. Um, I have not had much experience with Zvezda decals, but these don't look like they will be too bad. At least not anything a liberal application of Solvaset can't deal with. Clear parts, so we've got periscopes, headlight lenses, as well as vision blocks for the Commander's Coppola, uh, which I don't think we are using in this kit, so that might be a foreshadowing to a possible other variant that actually had the vision blocks in the hatch ring. But, Oops, my stupid head. But uh, this looks to be relatively clear. Uh, now there's some something funky going on in there. Um, I haven't really the few Zvezda kits I've really looked at. I've never been super impressed with their clear parts. There's usually a lot of distortion and. They've never really been that clear. I've only built a couple of Zvezda kits and they were both aircraft. Canopies were okay. Um, periscopes, I mean, the little tiny piece of clear you actually will see looks fine. So, 
cool. And clear headlight lens is something you don't always get. Cough, cough. So let's quick peek at the instructions. I'm guessing this was inspected by number eight. Once again, useful advice, blurbs, Russian, English, sprue. Apparently, I have a text message. Sprue map right here lays everything out. So we've got five sprues plus the clear sprue. Okay. So looks like we've got 10, 16, 18 overall assembly steps. And of course, some of these are broken down into sub assemblies. So step one, gun and mantlet and hatch bits, but hop over here to get your gun and mantlet put together first. Turret ring. Yeah, straight overall, straightforward. Uh, apparently the 50 cal just snaps into its mount and will be posable. Overall looks be pretty straightforward, not overly intense on number of parts. I know there are some kits where there's probably a dozen pieces in each suspension bogey, which makes them workable, which if that's your thing. Uh, looks like a fair amount of internal stuff here. So it looks like maybe we will see an interior kit of this Sherman in the not too distant future. Um, not sure why else you would bother putting all these extra walls in here if you weren't gonna actually have possibly um, an engine. Uh, length and length style tracks. Uh, these are the, I think these are the T54E1 uh, metal cleat tracks. Those look like they will go together quite well. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see how well the fit uh, from the bogies to the hull is so that we can glue our tracks and bogies as one unit and paint them up much like we did with the Tamiya R35. Um, also wheels are molded with kind of a bowl and then an insert. Um, all the instructions... Yeah, you get your separate engine grills and piece up here so they're going to cater to maybe we'll see an M4A3. Uh, of course, the A2 was the diesel powered uh, Sherman, and I believe the engine hatches were slightly different, if not different size, compared to the uh, gasoline powered ones, either the, the Ford uh, GAA engine or the um, Chrysler Multibank or the Radial. Those who know more about Shermans can look at that engine deck and tell you absolutely everything about the tank. Uh, more little pieces, headlight guards. It'll be interesting to see how thin those are molded. Nice clear bit for the headlights, various bits. In our upper hull and our sponsons together. So no big open gap onto the inside like them old Tamiya kits. Um, tow cable, um, from some reviews I've seen, that's apparently molded as one piece of plastic. I'm, it's interesting. Tools, uh, the applique armor onto the hull sides, which if I'm not mistaken would indicate that this is a wet stowage. Um, because these things, it wasn't the gasoline that made them blow up, it was a sudden emotional event to the ammo racks. So adding a little bit of extra armor on that side apparently helped. Probably also gave German anti-tank gunners a more obvious spot to shoot at. Uh, hatches, periscopes, looks like you can position them around. And you're done. So, okay, looks more or less straightforward in terms of assembly. Let's open this thing up. So, aside from previously mentioned Russian language inbox review, I haven't had a good look at one of these yet. So, let's get some first impressions. OK. 
Okay, so we've got multiples of our suspension bogey sprue. We've got upper hone base, we got turret bits, we've got other hull bits, and we've got duplicates for our tracks. So let's we'll need to look at one of those and one of these. And let's start with the track and the suspension. I stopped smashing my head into the camera. Okay, so kit does give us the solid spoked wheels or the solid dish we dished wheels. Um, instructions look like they're only showing these ones, so you've got some extra Sherman wheels or, you know, do some research, find a particular vehicle that you want to do. Very fine casting marks um, on the front of the bogies. No real cast texture, but you do have the casting numbers and symbols. And I like how I, I wish more people, more manufacturers would do this. Bring the separation of the mold to the edge of the wheel so I don't have to sand down or scrape down a big ugly mold line down the middle of the wheel. Move it to one edge or the other. Thank you Zvezda. So simply get your big bowl, put the one side in, and boom, wheel is done. Of course, suspension arms are all molded solid, so if you're doing the suspension displaced, you get it, get the main kit with the functional suspension. That's looking all right. Of course, length and length tracks do have a subtle amount of sag droop molded into the upper run. Sherman's, of course, had the live tracks, so they were generally pretty taut and shouldn't be big droopy things like you see on some Soviet or German tanks. Uh, we've got two different types of drive sprocket, the more solid type and the more open one there. Um, so once again, I'm not, I say you can take some options. So of course, if you have some reference material, you can use either one. Never a bad idea to have, if you build a lot of Shermans, it's never a bad idea to have all these spare parts in the, um, in your bin. So that if you're doing a particular vehicle, you can get all the little details right. Link length tracks. We do have some ejector pins on the inside face of the tracks, even the individual links. Probably not going to be an issue. Individual links are going to be going around either the idler wheel or the drive sprocket, so you're never going to see those. Um, maybe you want to fill these ones, although the base, the spacing looks like that might line up with the wheels, so We'll have to uh, make a judgment call at that time. The ones here we probably want to want to take care of. And there's one of our pieces of applique armor. Headlight, sorry, no, um, sorry, periscope guards. You know, commendably thin. I mean, some people would probably want to replace it with photo etch or wire, but those don't look too bad at all. Same with a few little grab handles. Don't look too bad. Lifting eyes, plates for, and actually those headlight guards, in theory, are probably a bit on the thick side, but much thinner than I've seen on other kits. Not too bad. All right, we've got our turret bits. So main gun and coax caliber 30 are molded as one piece do have a bit of a mold line on that main gun so we'll just sand, carefully sand that down you could of course uh, put a metal barrel on there but we're going to try and do this out of the box of course we'll drill open that I don't know uh, would have been nice to maybe see this slide molded so that we could have had a hollow muzzle um, Actually, they do give you the muzzle ends here, however, you know, might have been nice to see that on the end slide molded, giving us the hollow end to the barrel and to the caliber 30. 
Uh, caliber 50 anti-aircraft mount. That's not bad. Not the greatest M2 Browning I've ever seen. Um, I'm a big fan of the uh, former Tasca, now Asuka 50 cals. They are beautiful and definitely bring up any allied vehicle you put those on. Uh, here, of course, being the Commander's Cupola with the vision blocks. I don't believe those are called for. This is not called for on the kit. We're using the earlier style one with the two-piece hatch with the, with the machine gun mount. So I wouldn't be surprised if we'll see this kit maybe coming out as an M4A3 maybe or some other Sherman variant. But once again, fine casting marks. Um, like foundry marks, I should say, on the Cupola there on the gun mantlet, um, even some little marks, even little foundry marks on the, the hatch, split hatch there, up on the turret now, eagle-eyed among you will notice we do have some heavy mold lines on the turret, so we'll have to take those down, but this turret is as smooth as, it's fairly smooth. This is, of course, a big cast piece, so we're probably gonna have to put some cast texture on there. Um, so maybe a little, lose a few points there, Zvezda. Um, could put some cast texture on there, but I mean, even if they had cast texture, most people will add their own texture anyway, so take that one how you like. Uh, machine gun mounts, lifting eyes. Yeah, and then of course got the spotlight. Wasn't until a recent episode of The Chieftain I actually learned what this thing was. It's apparently a spotlight. Uh, radio antenna here molded. Um, looks a bit thick. Um, I traditionally use um, 0.015 inch steel wire for uh, tank antennas, which would be a little bit thinner than this, but that's, I mean, for being in plastic and not having broken yet, that's pretty good. Um, and like I said, 50 cal, not too bad looking. Eh, I've seen better, but it is passable and definitely, definitely looks better than what you see in some of the really old Tamiya kits. So yeah, not too bad. Um, we'll be texturing that turret up, but other than that, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got our lower hull sides, transmission cover. That's, yeah, that's the center firewall. I got the bolt plate for the front hull. Bolts look a little small in the openings. They should probably be a little bit bigger, but you know, not too bad. Um, got our bow machine gun there. Once again, you know, not molded hollow, but that wouldn't be hard to do with a drill. I nice see the cooling jacket in there. Now, here, okay, here we got some issues. So this is why you should be doing tow cables as a piece of wire. Um, commendable effort, mold, trying to mold this as one piece. Um, maybe you could have saved some CNC time and maybe given us some cast texture instead of a molded plastic tow cable. The detail on it does look nice. They've got the nice wound wire look to it, but this is broken in two places. Not to mention it would, you, eh, you'd have to be careful to get this off the sprue without breaking it, even if it wasn't broken. Um, so, eh, yeah, I would have done that differently if I was Vesda, but they probably had a rationale for doing that. Uh, tools look good. Some people may want to put some photo etch uh, mounting brackets on those. But what's in the kit for the way I build tanks looks good enough. Um, here's some of our headlight guards. Kind of on the chunky side. But, you know, passable. We could uh, take a knife or some files, thin those down a bit. Could replace them with some um, brass sheet or some, you know, spring for some photo etch parts. 
but you know, don't look horrible. Um, gun travel lock. And of course, front uh, final drive transmission cover. Just like the turret, this thing is as smooth as smooth is. Does have the foundry marks there, which is nice, but we're gonna have to texture that up as well. Just to differentiate these parts from the rolled steel plates. Once again, nice bolt texture behind the bogies and up the front. More little foundry marks. Get, give, I gotta give Zvezda kudos for that. Getting all these little foundry marks in there is a nice touch, but you know, some of these parts probably should be cast as well. So, too bad. Injection pin marks where we're not gonna see them, so no point. Yeah, that looks good. And the upper hull, upper hull, bottom of the lower hull, engine deck, rear, basically all the body of the tank and engine deck and looks to be, I think that's radiators. Looks nice, nice, nice weld beads there, more foundry marks. Weld beads look pretty good, I'm sure. Uncle Night Shift, if he was building this, would be breaking out the Tamiya Epoxy Putty about now, and but that looks good enough. Once again, this section up here, if I'm not mistaken, was a cast piece on these later, um, they call the Big Hatch Shermans with the steeper front slope. This section up here would have been cast, smooth as everything else, so have to get in there and do some texturing. Everything else looks nice and like that. This they must have polished these molds because some of this plastic is very smooth and very shiny. Like that's almost like model car. Nice little bolt details and on the engine deck there and underneath. Um, I've never really seen the point of doing all this detail on the bottom of the tank, because when it's sitting on the shelf, you never see the bottom. But, hey, it's there, it looks good. Escape hatch, bottom of the engine, the bottom attachments for the bogies with, once again, nice bolt, te beat, bolt detail. Engine hatches look good, no detail on the back side, so I guess if they are gonna do a if they do one with a, an interior, they would probably have to spruce those up a bit, but grills, yeah, deep enough. Those will take a, a black wash, make them look like they're actually open. Not too shabby, and of course, Vesda 2020, so this is all new. Again, injection pins, where we're not going to see them, don't care. All right. All right. So, quick and dirty little look at Tami Tamiya. Yeah, Tamiya. Zvezda's brand new 135th scale M4A2 Sherman in glorious Soviet markings and, you know, Marine Corps and American as well. Um, looks like it should be a relatively straightforward build. Um, it is Vesda. They, some of their kits are very good. Others are a little lackluster, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, overall, looks pretty good. Um, detailed without being horribly complicated. Uh, we are going to have to deal with all the smoothness and start roughening up the, uh, the turret, the top of the driver's positions, and that front transmission cover. But other than that, looks pretty good. So... At some point in the not too distant future, we are going to do a full build video of this. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. And we will catch you guys later.